house on today. Don't let any of us, oh God, leave this place the way that we came in. Because you're great and you're mighty, oh God. You're an awesome father, my God. Uh, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega, my God. You are the lifter of our bowed down heads, oh God. And we bless you in this house, hallelujah. And so we thank you, God. Have your way, 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 God. Bless the apostle, Lord God. As he brings forth the word on today, God, let it find a place in our hearts. Let us take this word out of here and into the marketplace, into the grocery store, God, into the uh, barber shop, oh God. Let us remember the things that he has taught us, that he's given us, that he's feeding us, uh, that we sheep can beget sheep. Bless the people online today, oh God. Let this word, my God, permeate the, my God, the, 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 the airwaves on today. And find a place, Lord God, uh, that you might be glorified and magnified and honored, oh God. Uh, over the airwaves, God. You're great again, oh God. And we bless you in this house. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to have our scripture reading from the book of Acts, chapter 4. Verses 23 through 31. Y'all know the book of Acts is, they say, the Acts of the, uh, of the Apostles. But it's really the Acts of the Holy Spirit. The Apostles did nothing unless they were moved, come on, by the Holy Spirit. And you and I can do nothing. Come on, y'all. We cannot act unless we are moved. Come on, y'all. By Holy Spirit, because it's in him and God Jesus that we live, move, what? And have our being. Acts chapter 4, verses 23 through 31. And let's read it together. It's on the screen for those of you. And you can turn around and read. Amen. On the count of three. One, two, three. And being let go. They went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, O Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them who by the mouth of your servant David have said, and the people plot vain things. Kings of the earth took their stand, and the rulers were gathered against, against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Watch this. Now, Lord, do what? And grant to your servants that what? With all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your, what? your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Watch this, and what? And when they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Oh my God, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Come on, let's give God a praise in the building. Come on, we prayed and we read, Come on, let this place Hallelujah. shake. Come on. That we might speak with boldness the wonderful things of God. Come on and bless us and take us into worship. Come on, come on.
Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. Come on and praise him. Glory. Come on and praise him. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Welcome to the worship center of Central Ohio, where we have come to praise the name of the Lord. Welcome to our wonderful people. Look at somebody and say, I'm glad to see you this morning. To our online guests, we're glad to see you. We're glad you made the choice to tune in to watch us and to celebrate and worship with us. Before you go to your seat, just go hug somebody and say, I'm glad to see you this morning. I'm glad to see you. somebody because somebody ain't move. I'm going to go hug somebody. Amen. I... Yesterday, we, um, we had an outing over at um, USA United States of America um, with, uh, with the, what are they called? The, 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 the proteins, the, the youngins, amen. And, and it was um, Maya's birth. Where's Maya? She's back there working, amen, learning how to. It was her birthday yesterday. We had a kind of celebration, and folks were skating, and um, and you know, Don McClurkin had a song some years ago. It said, "We fall down, but we get up." And I kept telling everybody, you know, uh, I didn't skate. Out full disclosure, I didn't skate. I can skate. I got some skills. But wisdom, come on, I exercise wisdom. And you know, um, when I went in there, um, I kept, for skating, uh, Brother Michael, I kept looking at them and, and they were out there on the, on the floor. And I kept saying to all of them, I kept saying, fall! 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 I said, because if you fall, I'm going to laugh. That sounds, that sounds mean, doesn't it? I, but you know what every one of them tried to do? Everybody tried not to fall. Otherwise, they'd just be skating around in life, accepting anything that happens. The first thing that happened to them, they'd fall. But I said, fall. And every time they went to fall, they would. They'd do their best to stay on their feet. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. And then when they fell, guess what they did? They didn't stay there. They got up very quickly. Am I telling the truth? They were struggling to stay on their feet. We need to learn how not to fall. 
but when you fall. Look at somebody say, get up. That's not your bed, get up. Because the reality is, if you're going to skate, somebody going to fall. If you're going to live, somebody going to fall. But I dare you to get up when you fall. Give God a praise in this building. I guess I'm the only one that came to be excited about the Lord. Hallelujah. Our moment of meditation. Reverend Jennifer, with our moment of meditation. We fall down. Whether it's getting to work on time, church on time, turning in an assignment, or taking a test. The last thing you want to hear if you're not even close to finishing is, time's up. Time is defined as being the indefinite, continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. It is measured in seconds, minutes, hours, days, and years. It's a precious commodity that some of us think we have an endless amount of, but truthfully, we don't. We all have a beginning, and we all have an end. In this prayer of Moses, he realizes and acknowledges the fact that God has always been and will always be God. God alone has all power and authority, and he is not bound by time. It is also in this prayer that Moses realizes that we, on the other hand, don't have all power and authority, and quite frankly, our days are numbered, whether you choose to number them or not. We live in a world where the 24-hour news cycle constantly reminds us that we don't have all the time in the world. There are countless acts of violence, natural disasters, acts of self-harm, disease, and freak accidents that take people away from here every day. This isn't meant to scare you or drive you to pull together a bucket list and run around saying, YOLO, you only live once. But this scripture, so teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom, is a gentle reminder to us to put good use all the time that God has given us. So let's not waste time living in anger, regret, guilt, and fear. Instead, let's look at life through the lens of gratitude, opportunity, and purpose. Let's celebrate God and his design, excuse me, and his design of and unique purpose for each of us. Let us pray. God, thank you so much for who you made each of us to be. Remind us, nudge us to number our days in a way that honors you and brings you glory. I ask God that you remind these precious ones that even when occasionally they don't hit the mark, that it's okay because your grace is already taken care of whatever and that you're a God of infinite do-over. We trust you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Teach us, O oh Lord. Teach us, O oh Lord, to number our days so that we don't waste time. Octogenarians. Octogenarians. That means those who are 80 years and above. You are in the 80 year generation. That's a blessing. I'm 61 and will be 62 in a, nu in a number of days. In a number of days. Moses was 80 years old when the Lord sent him back to Egypt to rescue his people. But somehow at, in our society and culture, we want to say the 80 is the year of retirement and that our better days are behind us. Who is the Lord counting on you to go and deliver. With all of your wisdom, with all of the things you've gone through, all your experience, and you say, it's my time to sit back and relax. And the Lord said, there's somebody, you need to go tell somebody to let his people go. I wish I had two witnesses in the house. So that means that those of us who are in our, and I'm going to preach about this, in our teens, in our 20s, in our 30s. You think 30 is old, don't you, young people? You think 40 is old, don't you, young people? You, take, you think 50 is old, don't you? But wait till you get there. But I'm trying to help you get ready for there right now. So... Teach us to number our days so that we won't waste time. All you have is the time that the Lord has given you. So make the most of the time that you have on earth. Our choir is going to sing. And I'm going to preach from this. I'm going to preach the subject. You're fit for this. You are fit. And, and Sister Zelda, I know the, I want the children to stay in here today. Because they need to be outfitted for what God has for them. Amen. And I, I think that the young and the older, we need to get this message together. Amen. Look at somebody and say, wake up. Wake up. Amen. Come on. Yeah, we got it. Hey. Now sing it.
Let's take it up a little bit. up again. Excellent is your name. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, 
for all. For all praises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all. For all praises. And all praises. And all praises. Yes, all. Yes, all praises. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yes. Yes, all praises. For all. For all praises. Belong. Belong to you. Yes, God. Everybody, let's take it right there, right there. Praises to the one to whom praise belongs. All praises belong. Let us stand to our feet as we go to the word of God. Amen. Paul wrote in the book of Romans, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And not to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Let us be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Father, we present our bodies to you, our minds to you, and our hearts to you, our spirits to you, our attitudes to you, our ears to you, our hearts to you, that we might receive this word that you have for us today. Father, from the youngest to the oldest, let this word find lodging in the deep recesses of their spirit, Father. Magnify yourself, Lord, in this place as only you can do. Give us power, Lord, and perception to speak a rhema and a ready word to your people right now in Jesus name let this word be time stamped let it be a seed that will be planted in their spirits at the right time it will go off when necessary in Jesus name amen let's thank the Lord for our music ministry all praises. Um, the book of uh, 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verses 32 through 40. I'm going to be reading 
from the New Living Translation. And I, um, I know today's children's church used on the second and fourth Sundays, but I, um, I, I want a word. And could everybody please stand? I want to. I want this word to um, to be for and to to our children and to the parents who used to be children. Because I think that um, oftentimes in church we miss opportunities because we think the children are going to stay young all the time. But how many of you know that they grow up? And they grow up quickly. So we have to ask the Lord to teach us to number our days so that what? We don't waste time. Five years from an eight-year-old child. An eight-year-old is going to be 13 in five years. There's a huge difference between an eight-year-old, y'all ain't talking to me, and a 13-year-old. And there's a big difference between a 13-year-old and an 18-year-old. So we got to get that 13-year-old at eight. Because if we don't get him at 8, we're going to miss him at 13. And if we ain't get him at 13, come on, help, God help us when they get to 18. Because then you can't tell them nothing. That's why we got to get them young. Y'all, come on, y'all, talk back to me. And so this is a message to everybody in here, to the younger people. How old are you, sir? How old are you? Nine. Lord have mercy. And he taller than me. That don't take much, but he... But that's what we have to get, and, and, and when you look in the Bible, the men and women who were really doing things were young people. They were young people. And that's not to say we discard the older people. Come on, hunt. We, we need your wisdom. First Samuel 17, verses 32 through 40. This is Samuel, who was. Writing about the life and the exploits of David. This is what he says. He says, this is David talking. Don't worry about this Philistine. David told Saul, I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. Watch this. You're only a boy. You're only a boy. And this is grown folk business. You're only a boy, and he has been a man of war since his youth. In other words, he's been fighting longer than you've been alive. But David persists. We need some persistent Davids. I've been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from his mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, lions and tigers, and bears. Oh, my. And I'll do it to this pagan Philistine, too, for he has what? He has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord, this is David, a boy talking. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this, from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead. He said, watch, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like. 
for he had never worn such things before. David said, I can't go in these. He protested to Saul, I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream, and put them into his shepherd's bag. Then armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Verse 39 said, David said, I can't go in these. He protested, I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. I'm going to preach and teach from the subject, I'm fit for this. I'm, look at somebody say, I'm fit for this. You may be seated. I'm, I'm, I'm fit for this. Whatever, y'all listen to me. I'm, I'm, I'm fit for this. Whatever, I want, you to, I, I want you to hear me clearly. Whatever your this is, God has equipped you for it. Whatever you are going to have to face, God has already equipped you for the this that you're going to have to deal with. When you play certain sports as a child, or whatever it might be, um, if you're going to play football, you don't wear baseball equipment. Your, your, your parents, watch, your parents make sure that you are properly equipped because they want you to be successful. You would not go on a football field with hockey equipment. You can't skate on a football field, and you'd look mighty ignorant and stupid. And what's more, you would not be able to uh, exercise or to demonstrate your natural ability if you had hockey equipment on a football field. And, and what's more, people would laugh at you, and you would be humiliated. No good parent would have their child improperly equipped for what they're about to engage in. And I'm going somewhere with this because if you think your parents, your, your earthly parents, know how to equip you for the game of life, what makes you think that our Father would not equip us properly for whatever we're going to have to deal with? I wish I had a praying church here. Uh, um, um, th there are two important days in the life of an individual. I, at least two important days. Number one, the, f the first day is the day you were born. That's a great day. My, 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 the day I was born is April 28, 1962. Guess what? That's a great day. If you ain't happy about it, I am. I, I, come on. Come, I, April 28, 1962, at, 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 in the morning time, I, I, I entered the world. That was a great day. And that was, that was an important day. Because it was a day the Lord has made, and somebody rejoiced at my birth. Because they had to go through some pain. And who knows the circumstance or situation, but somebody rejoiced when I entered the world. When I cried, somebody shouted. Y'all ain't helping me here. When you came, somebody cried. You cried, but somebody else said hallelujah. Because you, it was an important day, Calvin, when you came out of the birth canal. You got slapped on the behind, and you said, ah, you are here. You. That, that was a good day, the day you were born. And the second important day in your life is, one is, is the day you were born. second day is the day you realize why you were born. You, you, you. 
It's good that you were born. But do you know why you were born? And everything that the devil is doing in your life is to keep you from understanding and walking in your why. Because when you understand why God put you on this earth, you become a problem. I'm going to preach this to myself. There's a, and, and I might just throw this in there. That, yeah, the day you were born, and then the day you, under, you understand why you were born. And there's a third day, the day you were born again. Because there are some people who are born, and there are some people who understand why they are born, but that doesn't mean nothing if they're not born again. You might be rich, you, you get, but the, the, the Bible says, what will it profit a man to gain the whole world and what? And lose their soul. So you need to know, it's great you were born, and it's great to know why you were born, but you need to be born again. Somebody say, I'm here to make a difference. There's a movie called, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, by um, Liam Neeson is in there, and the movie is called Taken. Taken, and it's about a human trafficking situation where a man's daughter is abducted, and, in the, and, and she's abducted, and uh, Liam Neeson, the main character, says he finds out that his daughter is abducted, and so he gets in contact with the abductors. And this is what he said to them. He said, he said uh, if you're looking for a ransom, he said, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have, watch this, are a very particular set of skills. Skills that I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. If you don't let my daughter go now, if you, let my, if you let my daughter go now, that will be the end of it. But if you don't let my daughter go, I got some skills. A particular set of skills that I have acquired over a very long career. And everything that I have acquired over my lifetime, I'm going to bring to bear on this situation to get my daughter away from you. Look at somebody say, I've got some skills. Yeah. If you don't let her go, I'm going to be a problem for you. And not only for you, but everybody attached to you if I find out that anybody had anything to do with my daughter, when I come for you, I'm taking everybody out. Y'all don't even know how to shout. L listen, if somebody mess with your child, you will blow up the entire place just to get your baby free because you've got some skills. You are fit for this. I've got a particular a very particular set. He did not say, I have a unique, particular. He's letting you know that there's somebody else that has those skills as well. Guess what? You aren't the only one who's anointed. You ain't the only one that can sing. But there are some people who use their gifts and their talents to get other people out of bonded situations. If you don't let my child go, you're going to have a problem because I got the skills to deal with a devil like you. In other words, he said, I'm fit for this. That in, the, in the movie Lion King, remember that? Hakuna Matata means no worries. For the rest of our days, it's our problem-free philosophy. Hakuna Matata. 
there was a problem with that song because Simba was running with warthogs when he should have been walking with King. He was eating grubs, things he wasn't supposed to eat because that wasn't in a lion's appetite. It wasn't on the lot. Y'all ain't help. Yeah, I'm going deep in this thing. It wasn't on the on a lion's menu to eat vegan. Lions were the king of the jungle. They were the top of the food chain, and here is Simba who had a destiny. Hanging around with a warthog. Turning over logs and eating insects. When he was supposed to be dealing with the circle of life. Oh, y'all ain't helping me. And, and, but he's, he's running around singing Hakuna Matata. When he should have been roaring like a lion in the jungle. But now he's reduced himself to singing a song with a pig. Forgetting who he is. It's our problem. It's our problem free. A warthog, a warthog is not a lion. Lions and pigs have different destinies. So why are you as a lion singing a pig song? Is our problem-free philosophy? No! You've got a destiny, and it's tied up in who you really are. I wish I had a lion in the house. If you are the lion of Judas, you ought to roar in this place. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, roar! Simba singing Hakuna Matata. Simba had a father named Mufasa. I guess y'all didn't see the movie. The enemy says, Mufasa, when they say the name, enemies trembled at the name. Y'all, demons tremble at the name of, of Jesus. Just say the name Mufasa. Ooh, they started to. <laughs> Mufasa. <laughs> Mufasa is the king of the pride. Y'all remember that movie? If you haven't seen it, there's a lot of biblical imagery in it. If you haven't seen it. The, the, the lion is the king of the pride. All the lions would reign and roar and keep things into, in, in subjection and under control. And the, the, lions, the lions would travel in what they were called a pride. And there was always one who was the head of the pride, and not only the head of the pride, but of the jungle. Somebody say, God made me a king and a queen. Mufasa. Somebody say, Mufasa. He's a, ooh, he's a male lion. And he, Mufasa trains Simba to take, watch this, responsibility for his kingdom and his subjects and to respect the son, Mufasa teaches his son to take responsibility for Mufasa's kingdom. It wasn't Simba's kingdom. Y'all, come on. It was Mufasa's kingdom. And he taught his child to take care of the kingdom that he would leave to him when he died. So in order for, 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 for Simba to learn how to take care of the kingdom, he had to walk with his father. He couldn't get it through. He had to walk with him and see how he dealt with the coyotes 
and the jackals and the elder brother. He had to teach him how to deal with the scars of, you know, of life. Yo, I'm a priest this anyway. He had to teach him how to deal with the scars and get past it so you can learn how to run your kingdom. Come on, you can still heal with a scar. You can still reign with a scar. Come on, you can still be a king even though you got scars. Am I talking to anybody in here? I know you've been cut. I know you've been betrayed, but guess what? You are still, remember who you are. Simba tries to live a life that's devoid of responsibility. And Simba's father from the great beyond, Calvin, had to speak into Simba. Mufasa had to speak into Simba's life from the great beyond. He said, Simba, remember who you are. Look at somebody and say, remember who you are. You were betrayed by a scar. You were betrayed by somebody close to you. But you need to remember who you are. God created you not to run around with pigs. But he called you to reign. I wish I had five people in here who could help me with this. Remember who you are. Somebody say, I'm fit for this. I'm going to remember who I am. Watch this. There, there, there is a problem in the earth that you were created to solve. There's something, a, there's a reason, Dwight, why you were created in the earth. That's because there's a problem with your name on it. And guess what, y'all? That's your assignment. Huh? And you can't run around life talk about a hakuna matata. It's my life. I can do what I want to do with it. You can't run around talking, it's my, I can do what I want, it's my. No, your life is not your own because God created you with a divine assignment. You are not here just to breathe and take a breath. There's a problem in the earth, and we're singing Hakuna Matata. I'm a priest this anyway. I'm talking to children. I'm trying to tell the children, remember, Moriana, remember who you are. Imani, remember who you are. You've been named Imani for a reason. Guess what Imani means? It means what? Faith. Now faith is the substance of things. Come on, y'all. Of things hoped for. Y'all don't even know when it shouts. We've got a faith warrior in the house right now because she is a problem. You were created to deal with a problem. Is your assignment. And God has outfitted you uniquely and particularly to deal with what your assignment. And you think the enemy doesn't like you because you're cute. You, you think the enemy doesn't like you and that he's opposing you. Um, for all these different reasons. But the reason the enemy is opposing you is because he knows that when you realize who you really are, you're going to be a problem. When you find your back up against the wall and somebody has snatched something from you that you birthed, you got skills that you've acquired over a long period of time that has prepared you to deal with somebody that snatched something from you and you got the skills, come on. To somebody say, I'm fit for this. I'm, 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 I'm fit for this. A, a tailor, anybody ever had a custom made suit? 
have, have a custom made suit. Customized. Guess what? I can't wear Michael Patterson's suit. I don't care how good it looks. I don't care, it might be made of the finest fabric. But I'd look like a fool. And would not be able to function if I wore something that was tailor made. Come on, y'all. For Michael Patterson. He gonna look it, he gonna he gonna put it on, and it's gonna fit him just right. And he's gonna walk with confidence. Because he paid for it and it was made. Come on, just for him. Oh, my God. When the tailor takes his measurements and, 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 and makes accommodations for growth. Because guess what? When you start feeling good, you are going to grow. But, but, but when they fit him, it fits him just right. And when he step, watch this, when he steps out in his tailor-made outfit, Zelda, Mike knows he's looking good. You ain't going to tell him he's looking good. Because he feels good. You look good, you feel good. You feel good, you play good. That's Dion. But when you got it on and it's tailor-made, nobody has to tell you how good you look. Because you know you look good. Yeah, I, I guess I'm talking to you know you. When you know you look good, nobody got to tell you, you just walk good. Yo, I guess y'all ain't ever felt like that. But not only will Mike know he look good, but his wife going to say, baby, you look good. Somebody going to signify. It's going to make Mike walk with a dip in his. Because he's been, something has been cut, watch, just for him. Y'all missed that, the cutting part. God cut Jesus on the cross just for you. So he could give you a blood tailor-made suit. So y'all ain't helping me. So you could walk in all the power. He cut me. So I could know that I'm fit for this. Fit. Fit. How's your fit? I'm going somewhere with this, y'all. I'm going somewhere. Um, your, your fit. And I have to tell you that... Um, I said last week I had a confession, and I was dealing with some things, and going with it, something that's called imposter syndrome. And I wanted the children in here, because I wanted you, I want everybody in here, I don't care where you are, um, you need to have a, uh, a conversation um, with your mental voice. Everybody in here needs to have a conversation with that voice in your head. Y'all act like y'all know what I'm talking about. Because somebody's that that mental voice started talking to you. What's your name, son? Uh, Mor Mar what's your name? Austin? We all have these conversations in our head that nobody can hear but the one speaking and the one listening. Huh? And that mental voice might be telling you some things that have nothing to do with your destiny. And the reality is, some of you are listening to that mental voice right now, rather than listening to the word of God. And I don't care how long you've been in church, if you don't keep your mind, that your mind focused on Jesus, you'll find yourself listening to that voice rather than the voice of y'all helping, rather than the voice of God. I'm trying to tell everybody in here, you are fit for this. That's why we got to get them young. Jesus was in the temple at the age of 12. At the age of 12, answering, come on, scribes and Pharisees at the age of 12. When his parents came to find him, they had gone two or three days and forgot about the fact that they had left Jesus behind in the temple. But when they found him, he said, don't you know I have to be about my what? My father. He understood that he was fit for this at a young age. I'm trying to tell y'all young people in the Jewish culture, 12 was a woman for, what, 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 was the age of adulthood for a woman. 
13 for a child, for a boy. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying? They didn't baby them. They taught them. They apprenticed them because they understood that they were going to be. Mary was 14 years old when she was carrying Jesus. I'm not trying to listen. I'm not trying to say y'all need to have it. No, I'm not saying that. But understand this, that she was 14 and carrying the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So let's go deep on this. Yeah, at 14, you can carry. Being birthed by the Holy Spirit, you can carry something within your spirit that's going to deliver a whole generation. You see, y'all get in the physical. In the spirit, at a young age, God can implant something in a young girl. It's going to be a blessing to the nation. Somebody say, I'm fit for this. I'm fit for this. And imagine a 14-year-old Mary who was carrying Jesus for all those years. Imagine how dangerous she'd be at 50. She has a unique or particular what? Set of skills. And if you mess with my baby, I'm, I'm going to deal with you, but he's already in glory. But I still got some skills to deal with the devil here on earth. You, you, you mess with my, my son, and he's in heaven right now. But if you mess with my children, you're going to have to deal with my set of skills. Okay, I, I'm fit for this. Samuel, I, I got to teach this. Samuel. Sa Y'all know Samuel in the Bible? Um, he was the, 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 the product of a woman who had a rival. <laughs> she was barren, but the other wife was having babies. And, and then the woman who, had, who was not barren made fun of the one who was barren. I'm trying to tell you right now, just because somebody doesn't have any fruit right now, you better leave them alone. Huh? Watch this. But Hannah prayed. Listen, I, I need some praying women in the house. Yeah, yeah, I, no, yeah, I don't know. You might not need a baby right now. I'm talking about you need some spiritual babies. I need some pray. Listen, you might not have been fruitful all your life, and everybody else getting blessed but you. Hannah took it to the Lord. And the Bible says that Hannah prayed, and the Lord gave her, Zelda, a child. She said, if you give me a son, I'll give him back to you. Come on. All the days of his life. Y'all ain't here when I, all the day, not some of the days, I will give my child back to you all the days of his life. The Bible says that when everybody went up to Jerusalem at that time, after, after she gave birth, Hannah said, I'm, I'm going to stay here with this child. I'm going to feed him until he is weaned. <laughs> Till he can't get any more from me. I, I'm going to put him in the presence of the Lord so the Lord can feed him for what he's about to walk into. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Samuel was a baby boy. The mama had enough sense to say, you know, you gave him to me. I'm going to give him back to you. And watch Eli. Eli, I, I don't even know why. I know why I'm here. But I'm trying. Eli was an evil. Sorry, high priest. But the Lord still allowed Samuel to be trained up under an evil, unreliable priest. You talking about church ain't nothing. Get your behind in there because God can still raise you in the middle of corruption. So Sam, so Bible says that Samuel, once, once Samuel was weaned, 
when it came time to offer sacrifices, watch. They went up to temple, and, and, uh, and, and, and the, the other wife, I forget her name, was, was offering sacrifices, but Hannah gave her child. Penina gave sacrifices, but Hannah gave her She gave to the Lord her firstborn, the one she loved and prayed for. And while y'all ain't getting this, Hannah gave him back to the Lord as a living, oh my God, as a living sacrifice. Not something that was over the hill, but he was going to be raised in the presence of the Lord. He, he was raised in, underneath one who had, the Lord had, uh, Eli, whom the Lord had, had stopped speaking to. No dreams or visions. Words from the Lord were rare. But, but when Samuel comes, watch it. God stopped speaking to Eli, but because there was a child in the presence, the Lord started speaking again. Y'all, y'all, that's why, listen, you need to get your children in church. Because guess what? The mama might not, the grandmama not be in. I don't care that daddy might not be anything, but guess what? Get your child in church. And the Lord will speak to the child, even bypassing the parent. Watch this. Go back and read 1 Samuel. The Bible says that Samuel was in the church. How? Yeah, Samuel was in the church. He, he, see, he was fit for this. Samuel was fit for this. Samuel was fit for this. They tailor made a, a garment for him so he could serve in the presence of the Lord. They created it. Hannah, his mama, made clothes for him. To serve in the church. Though Eli and his sons were corrupt, she still trusted God to watch over her child. Uh, I, I will trust in the Lord till I die. I, I'm going to trust until I die. She trusted the Lord enough to know. I, yeah, if, if you gave me this child, I know you're going to watch over him. So she, she, she built something for him, put it on him, and he was in Serving in the presence of the Lord. And watch this. And the Bible says that at some point in time that the Lord began to speak. Samuel, who did not know the voice of the Lord, was still serving. Even though he was not saved. Some of y'all saved and ain't serving. But Samuel did not know the Lord's voice, but he was still faithful and diligent and serving. Am I talking to anybody here? He was still serving. The Bible says that Samuel was sleeping outside of the Holy of Holies. Sleeping. And then, the, because the lamp had not gone out, it was his job, right, to keep the lamp burning. He was serving. The Bible says, brother, that, listen, that the Lord cried out from behind the temple, from behind the veil. Samuel wasn't afraid. 
he jumped up and went to Eli and said, did you call me? Eli said, I ain't say nothing. Nobody say anything to me. See, that's why some folk can get excited in church. Because God's saying something, and they ain't heard nothing. He's speaking loud and clear from behind the veil, and you don't hear nothing because you aren't a, oh, my God. Yeah, you got Eli. You deaf like Eli. But there's a Samuel. Eli said, I ain't hear nothing. Go back to sleep. <laughs> so I'm going to say to all y'all sleeping, go back to sleep. <laughs> Go back to sleep. Samuel goes back, and the Lord calls him again. He gets up again and runs to Eli. Bruh. I know I'm not here. I know I heard a voice. Eli said, What do you mean? Go back to sleep. Go, go back to sleep. I ain't say nothing, I ain't heard nothing, so you got to be hearing things. That's why when the Lord speaks to some people, he said, you got to be hearing things. Yeah, yeah, I ain't hear nothing. If I ain't hear nothing, he, ain't nobody said nothing. Why would God speak to you and I'm the holy one? The Lord said, listen, because you haven't heard my voice in a long time, so I've got to bypass your holiness to get to my holiness. Then Hunt, Eli got the message. He said, wait a minute. It could be, could be that the Lord is talking. I, ha I haven't heard his voice in a long time. But, 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 lie down again. And when you hear him say, your servant here. He didn't, he didn't do what he was supposed to Eli hadn't done, didn't do what he was supposed to do, but he still knew how to teach somebody else how to hear the voice of God. Y'all hear what I'm saying. You better help somebody hear the voice. I'm trying. Yes, Lord. Your servant, not your anointed not your apostle, not your high priest, but your servant. The Lord wants people to be fit for this, to be fit for a servant's robe. He's trying to walk around investments and everything else. He, can you be a servant and wash somebody's feet? Oh, I can't get no hallelujahs there. Samuel was raised from the days of a child. The Bible says that during all of his life, not one of his words fell to the ground. Not one word. Not one. Everything he said came straight from the throne room of God. And what God said to him, he said to the people. And everything that came out of his mouth, come on, came to pass. I don't know about you, but I want to have that Samuel anointing. That whatever comes out of my mouth, come on, God's going to make it come to pass. I wish I had somebody who was fit for Y'all ain't saying nothing. The Lord had reminded me, he had reminded me, he said, listen, your name is David. Oh, God, I don't share. He, he said, Mike, he said, your name is David. Your name is David. But you need to remember who anointed you. Remember who anointed David.
You only got anointed. David got anointed only because I told him to anoint David. Watch this. I'm going to say eight. The Bible says that David was number eight. David wasn't invited to the party when the anointing was taking place. David was out in the field. Come on, wake up! He was out in the field taking care of sheep. The Bible says that Samuel had the anointing. He had the oil, but he didn't have anybody to anoint. So when he got to Jesse's house, Jesse's sons showed up and he looked at the first one and said, oh, he tall, he handsome. That's got to be the Lord's anointed. That's like Hunt, tall and tall. Look at the outward appearance. Come on, y'all. And, and decided based upon what they saw, that's got to be the one. Number one, that wasn't the one. Number two, come by. Number three, Samuel's got that anointing oil. So Samuel's ready to anoint somebody. But the oil can't flow till it finds the right head. So he, he says, he said, he, Samuel, said I, Samuel was itching to anoint somebody because he knew he had the right house, but he had the wrong number. So five, six, seven, and he said, wait a minute, I'm still, so, so I'm still, I still got the anointing oil, and I know I'm on assignment to do, but the anoint, I've got the oil, but where is the one I'm supposed to anoint? S number seven. No, number seven. What's the number seven mean? Complete. I went through com everybody in your family completely. I wanted to annoy everybody. But there's the one outside taking care of my sheep. He said, listen, we ain't, go get them. We gonna wait. I know, same as I know my assignment, Austin. I know my, I know why I'm here. I've got the anointing oil, but I have no one to anoint. We going to wait, and ain't nobody going to eat till he comes here. I'm Y'all y'all know when it shall. Come on. You got, you let, listen, you, want, you wonder why everybody's standing? They're waiting for you to show up. Y'all missed that. Everybody else got passed by. You, everybody, you, they, you wondered why everybody else got invited. Guess what? He's about to call your name. going to wait right here. Ain't nobody going to move and sit down until number eight shows up. New beginnings. David was a young boy when God placed him over all of Israel. Watch this. He was anointed but the day he was anointed, what did he do? He went back into the fields to serve. Y'all hear what I'm saying? All of us anointed people who don't want to serve. Huh? I've got my particular set of skills that are used only for this. That's what my skills are for, is to do that. No, David said, listen, I'm over it all. But I'm still out here doing what I was doing before I was called to do what I'm going to do. Your present office does not exempt you from past service. Everybody is fit for this. And David, it, it, it wasn't until such time that David had, watch this, ooh, thank you, Jesus, that David had to deliver the people 
that God used his past skills. What did David say? He heard Goliath taunting the people of Israel. They were on one side, Philistines, and the Jews were on the other, his, his, on the other side. And for 40 days, Reagan, and 40 nights, the giant was crying out into the valley. No need to have everybody die. Just send out somebody. Just one. And we can settle it. And if they win, we'll be your slaves. If we win, you're going to be our slave. And nobody, watch this, nobody, even the king, we're going to fight that giant. David was at his house. He went there to bring some food to his brothers on the front line. And, and he, watch this. He heard the taunt of the Philistine. And then he said, wait a minute. Who is this? This uncircumcised. Come on. This un giant. Come on. Who's this uncircumcised Philistine talking about what? My God? David said, bro, you must not know who I am. I got a particular set of skills that if you don't let my people go, I'm going to be a problem. Y'all yeah, ain't hear what I'm saying. There's, I'm going to be a problem. David said, ain't nobody done nothing. Everybody in the church. Ain't nobody going to stand up. For the Lord, you're all going to sit there while this uncircumcised Philistine talks about our God. David said, wait a minute. Why, but watch this. David said, uh, watch this. David, David was a businessman. What, what would a person get? Come on, what's in it for me? Come on, if, if I use my skills. <laughs> come on now. I, come on. I, I, I work for, I'm, I'm fit. If I use my, what, what do I get if I take this giant down? There he said, wait. He said, what? He, he said, you, you can marry. The king going to give you his daughter? David said, that ain't nothing. <laughs> David said, I got riz. I got, <laughs> y'all know about that. There was, I get women. There was, and that ain't no problem for me. But, but then they said, you and your family, you and your family won't have to pay taxes forever. David said, give me my, my, shoot, let me, say this. Don't got to worry about April 15th forever. Every dime I make is mine. No tithes, no offerings. Y'all should shout right there. I don't got to pay nothing. It's in the book. If I take down the giant. There's a, that's light work. I dealt with a lion and a. Bear, <laughs> with my bare hands. This is the point I want to get to. He said, don't worry about this Philistine. Don't worry, don't worry about that giant. Telling y'all right now. Okay, listen, look, look, at somebody, look at somebody say, don't worry about that giant. You got skills. Okay. That you've acquired over a lifetime. You didn't know your skills were preparing you for this. 
You had no idea that the Lord was outfitting you custom made for the one you're going to have to rescue. Somebody say, I'm fit for this. Don't worry about this giant. You gotta, you've already dealt with the giant in your head. Telling you, you'd never make it. Huh? David said, don't worry about this Philistine. He said, I'll go fight him. And then, you know, he said, don't be ridiculous. You are, you are, you can't fight this Philistine because you are just a boy. You, 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 you arrogant little boy. Sit down. This grown folk business. If we're a grown folk business, how come folks ain't taking care of business? Huh? Pause. If, if the king had been doing his business, it wouldn't have required a boy. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. What he said. That, uh, I can take it from my feet, from his resume. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw, club it to death. I got skill. I've done this lion and bears. I, I got skill. And I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. He has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord, he said, the Lord rescued me. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The Lord rescued me. See, he knew the Lord. The Lord rescued me from the lion, claws of the lion, and the bear. And he'll rescue me from, my, from this Philistine. Paul, Paul, Saul said, okay, go ahead. May, may the Lord be with you. <laughs> go ahead. May, and may God be with you till we meet again. Lord, watch between me and thee. Then watch this. Then Saul gave David his own armor. A bronze helmet and a coat of mail. Imagine Saul, six feet something, giving to David something that wasn't made for him. David had a nerve to try. David put it on, and he said, "You know what? I I can't I can't move in this. Watch this. I can't watch y'all hear this." David said. Listen, I have not used this. I know you ain't using it. So no use in me using it if it ain't working for you either. Huh? I, you ain't use it, so why you gonna, why you gonna have me wear something that ain't working for you? Some of the stuff happening in churches right now ain't working. It, it, it ain't working. And some young folks are like, come on, I can't sing that song. That's not my armor. I ain't fit for that. Oh, y'all got choir man right there. Y'all know how it was growing up in church. I'm going to say this real quick. We're growing up in church. The Hawkins family came out. Church had a fit. Old church had a fit. Old church had a fit because it was contemporary. Oh, happy day with the Hawkins family. Oh, that was secular. I want precious Lord, take my hand. I want Thomas Dorsey, prayer Jet Lord, take my forgetting the fact that when Thomas Dorsey sang that song, they wouldn't let him sing it in the church either. <laughs> David said, I can't wear this. This doesn't fit me for what I'm about to do in my next phase of life. I'm grateful for. How it, you used it, but I'm not fit for that. I'm fit for, David took it off. 
He took off his vestments. He took off his robes. And he put on his shepherd bag. He took five smooth stones. Five is the number of Christ. And the Bible says that he said, Goliath said, you come at me with, with a dog. David David didn't wait for the him to, for the for the giant to come him. The Bible says David ran toward him. Took it on the way. Took it out. <laughs> Hit him in the forehead. And it wasn't the blood, it wasn't a rock in his forehead that killed him. David took his own, David took Goliath's sword. And finished the job. Listen, don't play with your giant. You, you listen, don't just knock your giant out. Take that sword off your giant and finish the job. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying? That's why when I tell people to praise the Lord, come on. Uh, the, all of that kind of, you know, it, it gets the devil kind of woozy, but guess what? When you open your mouth and give God praise, come on, that's going to finish the job. I need some finishers in the house. Come on, let's give God a praise. Come on, I'm, if you're fit for this, come on, give God a praise in the building. Hallelujah. 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 Let's give God a praise in the building. Give God a praise in the building. Come on, Terry. I've got a unique or particular set of skills that if you let my child go, it's all good. But I have to, if I have to use these skills, it's going to be a problem for you and everybody associated with you. That's what the Lord wants we, us to have, that kind of attitude. Because the enemy wants to keep you from spreading the good news. It wants to taunt you across the valley. Saying, you can't deal with this. You can't handle that. What makes you think you can handle what you're going through? You are just a child. You too old. You too that. The Lord said, Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. I fit you for this. Brothers and sisters, we need to learn how to have the right attitude at the right time. You, we need to learn how to suck our teeth at the devil. Who you think you talking to? Do you know who I am? Do, you must not know. But you're going to find out in a heartbeat. Because I've got a unique set of skills, a particular set of skills. This has equipped me to deal with situations just like this. If you let my daughter go, that's good. But if not, you're going to have a problem. Act like the next person that you're talking to is being held hostage by the devil. person on your job and they don't, you can't hear that, that voice in their head telling them to ignore you. But you can see right through them and you can speak to them in a way that only they can, they can hear what you're saying. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They're telling you, they're telling you, they're, they're, they're te that, that person holding them hostage, if you say something, I'll kill you. Because you hear the voice of the Lord speaking. The Lord will tell you exactly what to say to that person. The Lord will give you a word in your ear that comes from only the throne room of God to ask them a question that only they can know the answer to. And they'll know it's the voice of God coming from your mouth. And the devil will know it too. 
and they'll have to let that person go. Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. Has that ever happened to anybody? You, you, God gives you a word that only, a word of knowledge. Grab somebody by the hand. Just grab somebody, anybody. One hand, left hand, right hand. Touch hands. Every hand that's being held has a unique fingerprint. Yeah. When those hands come together, we can do some damage for the kingdom. Yeah. You're fit for this. God gave you a handprint that makes you unique. And that when you touch it, God uses you. Come on, it's credited to your account and glory. But when we come together as a people, when we stretch our hands to the Lord, as one body in Christ, from the youngest to the oldest, I don't know about you, but I know I'm going to hear the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You've been faithful, what? Over a few things. Now he's going to say, enter into the joy of the Lord. Come on, put those hands together and bless the Lord in the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to understand this, that God has fit you. He has brought you in. He's equipped you. You read Isaiah, I mean, Jeremiah chapter 1. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and I ordained you to be that way. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, I believe it is, when Paul tells Timothy, to fan into flame the gift. I'm going to fan into flame. Come on, the gift that's within you. I know you got it because he said, I laid hands on you. And I know your heritage. I know your mother and your grandmother. I know it's in there. I know you're dealing with a hard time, Calvin, but it's in there. Fan into flame. Give blow on your gift. Give oxygen to it. Stop letting the devil suffocate. You might be in here today. You've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. We invite you to give your life to Jesus Christ today. Listen, you, you might not have ever grown up in church. You didn't have a Samuel experience. But guess what? Samuel was serving even before he knew the Lord. That eliminates that excuse. He said, well, I don't, I'm, I'm not, per Samuel didn't even hear the voice of the Lord. But he was still in the church serving. I want to give you opportunity to come and serve the Lord. That, that, that. I believe sometime in serving, we get to know who Jesus is and what it means to serve. But I want you to come and serve, but if you, if serve, you might want to know that Jesus Christ is Lord and you have accepted him as Lord. We invite you to come give your life to him today. And if that's the case, we invite you to come. But if you're looking for a church home, we invite you to come give your life to Jesus Christ. You are fit for this custom-made, tailor-made just for you. He will take you just as you are, just as you are. Come on. Just as you are. Just as you are. Just as you are. Just as. Just as you are. Just as. No matter what you've done, no matter who you are. No matter what you. 
Won't you come? No matter who you, he'll take you. Well, we have done it as the Lord has required. Let's bless the Lord in the house. Hallelujah. You may return your seats and it's offering time. It's offering time. There are a number of ways that we can give. Number one is you can mail it in to the Worship Center of Central Ohio, P.O. Box 360701. Columbus, Ohio, 43236, or our website, wccoimpact.org, and hit the donate button, or on GiveLify, you find Worship Center of Central Ohio, and you can give securely there, our cash app, dollar sign, the Worship Center 614, or on Zelle at finance at wccoimpact.org. Thank you for your giving, thank you for your obedience to the Lord, and, um, and giving out of a sense of gratitude, but also obedience. You know, this is our 20th anniversary, praise the Lord, that we are on August 2nd. Um, we, we're going to have a musical guest, Kurt Carr. We're, we're finalizing details on that. Um, but we need to give for, for the church, but also give toward uh, everything that we have going so this can be a rousing success. Amen? Amen. We want to support our own. And there is another, um, as, our, as our ushers are coming, there's a church fundraiser. How many of you like popcorn? Yeah. Well, I love popcorn. I, I'm, I'm grateful that I can eat popcorn now. Praise the Lord. There was a time when I was healed of, of, of a situation. So now I can eat pop. We have a, a, a fundraiser for the church. And it's in, it's in crew. And please set up your double good store in there. Um, and so when, we, when it begins, when does it begin, um, Reverend Ricky? The 23rd of April. And so send it out to your friends. You don't have to carry any inventory. Send the link out to them, and they get popcorn, and it'll be a blessing to the ministry. Amen? All right. All right. Let us stand. Who is the top giver in the church? Who wants to be the top giver in the church? I'm going to raise my hand on that. Because that says, Lord I, I, uh, Lord, I want you to bless me. And then when you bless me, I'll bless my house. See, some people are afraid of being blessed because of the responsibility that comes with it. Matt, who wants to be the top giver in the church? Because when that happens, you can bless your house and your children and your children's children. Hallelujah. So Father, right now, as we're lifting our hands, it's not about competition. But we say we're blessed to be a blessing. Blessed in the city and in the field when we come and when we go. And so, Father, I pray that you would bless us financially with health, generationally with health and with finances and with favor, that our children's children for generations until you come back would be ones through whom the earth will be blessed because we are the seed of Abraham and we give you glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please follow the direction of our ushers from the back. Come around from the back and give here, then go back down to the center aisle. Bring the tithes and offerings into the storehouse that there might be food in my house and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive. Give and it shall be given back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Well, man, give it to your bosom. Amen. All right. 
Father, for these gifts you've given, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you. We appreciate the fact that you trust us enough with your resources and that we're using them, Father, for the upbuilding and uplifting and the maintaining and thriving of your kingdom. Bless and return to the cheerful giver, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sister Reagan is coming with our announcements. Good afternoon, church. April 20th, every member is encouraged to join us via Teams for our Memberment Empowerment Meeting at 10 a.m. We have another opportunity to raise funds for our 20th anniversary events. Starting on April 23rd through April 27th, we are asking every member to sell double good popcorn. If you have an email address but haven't received the email, please meet with Reverend Ricky following service. And on April 28th, it's our Apostle's 62nd birthday. Our guest speaker is Bishop H. Eugene Bellinger. Join us as we celebrate our Apostle with a reception following worship service. And as we continue to grow our ministry, please check through in the newsletter to stay connected. Praise the Lord. And we want to be in prayer for our, our church family. Landa Cornewton families had some tragic events, um, deaths, um, there's sickness running rampant, cancer situation, but you know what, that's a giant that we can slay. Amen. And have that kind of mindset that you have a particular set of skills that the Lord has equipped you with to deal with whatever giant you have to deal with. Hallelujah. All right, let us stand. Because God says, I'm a lender. I am no longer in debt because God says I am prosperous. I never go hungry because God is my provider. I am not the tail. Because God says I am the head. The devil cannot curse me. Because God says that I am blessed. I walk in health. Because God says what? I am healed. I am blessed to be a blessing. Our mission statement says the worship center exists to transform lives and disciple nations in the name of Jesus Christ. And now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Above all that we ask everyone think. To the only wise God, be glory, honor, dominion, majesty, and power, both now and forevermore. And the people of God shouted, hallelujah. hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm fit for this. this. See you on Wednesday at 630 for prayer and 7 for Bible study. Amen. <laughs>